Hello everyone, welcome back to the Red Team training series. In this video, we are going to be taking a look at a Red Team lateral movement tactics and techniques uh, for Windows systems. So again, this particular video series was designed uh, with Windows in mind, or that was the core operating system that we were targeting. So it's only fair that we end this series by taking a look at a very important uh, tactic in the red team life cycle which is lateral movement all right now in regards to what we will be covering in this video we'll again get an idea of what lateral movement is and then we'll move on to the practical section where we will explore various uh, lateral movement techniques uh, either using psxec uh, pass the hash or we'll take a look at how to use pass the hash uh, and uh, we'll also take a look at how to uh, authenticate to the target via rdp that being said uh, firstly, we need to get an understanding of what lateral movement is. So again, this was the definition from the MITRE website. And again, it tells us that lateral movement consists of techniques uh, that adversaries use to enter and control remote systems on a network. Uh, following through on their primary objective often requires exploring the network to find a target and subsequently gaining access to it. Reaching their objective often involves pivoting through multiple systems and accounts to gain access or further access of on the network. Adversaries might install their own remote access tools to accomplish lateral movement or use legitimate credentials with native network and operating uh, system tools which may be stealthier. Now we are going to be focusing on this last section here where uh, we uh, adversaries might install their own remote access tools uh, to accomplish lateral movement or use legitimate credentials with native network and operating system tools which may be stealthier. Now the reason we're going to be focusing on utilizing legitimate credentials for lateral movement is primarily because uh, the environment that we have been targeting isn't an active directory environment and again we are pretty much targeting one system and uh, of course we may discover other systems as we move along uh, but we are going to take a look at how to use the legitimate credentials that we were able to gather and utilize them for legitimate authentication with psxec and also for the hashes that we were able to gather we'll I'll also take you through the process of using these password hashes for legitimate authentication so again, as I said here, our objective is to utilize the clear text and, and cl the clear text passwords and the hashes to facilitate lateral movement through legitimate authentication protocols and methods. So it's fairly simple to understand what we're going to be doing here. So when we take a look at the MITRE attack framework and the lateral movement uh, tactic, you can see that uh, we are going to be taking a look at uh, remote services and alternate forms of authentication. Now, the reason why this is so important is primarily because whenever we run an exploit or whenever we've gained initial access to a target system, uh, we have done so, at least in the case of this video series, by exploiting a particular service or vulnerability, right? And uh, that isn't a legitimate form of authentication. So once we've, uh, we actually explored the, pro the credential access tactic, and were able to dump uh, clear text passwords from memory as well as uh, password hashes, uh, what do we do with these credentials? Well, that's where we, we can actually use them. So this is uh, th these techniques essentially deal with us uh, putting to use these credentials uh, for two main reasons. Number one, uh, we can use them for uh, legitimate authentication, which means we're now going to be utilizing a, a much more stable uh, stream of control in regards to our target system. So again, we can utilize the credentials to gain access to the target via RDP, which is much more uh, is much more efficient and it is again legitimate. So we're not going through any uh, covert channels of uh, communicating with the target. Uh, secondly, as to why this is uh, very, very important, is uh, it is much more stealthy because again we're not exploiting any service or we're not uh, you know um, we, we don't have to worry about antivirus uh, detection or evasion we are using le legitimate uh, overt channels of communication and authentication and then running our code that way so again this is a very very important step in the red team life cycle uh, that being said let's actually get started with the practical aspect of this video so i'll see you back on my cali vm all right, so I'm back on my Kali VM and I currently have access to the Windows 10 target via a Meterpreter session and I haven't elevated my privileges yet. So that's what I'm going to be doing first. And then I'll take you through the workflow we utilized to get the um, the clear text passwords and the password hashes. So I will just put this in the background 
and we will search for bypass UAC. We'll use the same um, privilege escalation technique. And again, we'll just use this particular module here, the uh, bypass UAC injection win SXS. We'll set the payload to Windows uh, X64 meterpreter reverse TCP. And then we want to set the target to Windows X um, Windows X64, right? And then we set the uh, L host to uh, again. Do we need to actually configure that? Let's take a look here. Show options. No, we don't. We already have the, that configured. And again, I'll leave the default port there. Uh, we just need to change the session. So I'm going to say set session one, and we hit run. And uh, we should be able to have successfully elevated our privileges, right? Um, so again, I'll just let this uh, complete. Uh, we'll wait for the for, for, we'll wait for this to for the module to actually send the stage, and we receive the interpreter session. And uh, now we can move on to the next step, right? So if I say get privs, you can see that we've elevated our privileges. So if I can say get UID, it's still telling me the same. Um, so I can load incognito, right? And I will list the tokens. And uh, again, we can then impersonate the anti authority system token here. So I'll just copy that and uh, we will again then say impersonate token. And I'll just paste in the token name there, hit enter. That uh, should provide us with anti authority system privileges. So there we are, get user ID. Fantastic. So now that we've elevated our privileges, we can run commands like hash dump. That'll give us the hashes for the all the user accounts on the system. So uh, I can copy them uh, because we will be utilizing them in a few seconds here. And I'll, I'll actually uh, keep them right over there. And uh, we also utilized Mimikatz and uh, I'll utilize Mimikatz by loading it in Meterpreter using load Kiwi. And uh, we were able to identify um, the clear text passwords by dumping the uh, the LSA or we were essentially dumping secrets from LSA or utilizing LSA. So I can say LSA dump um, secrets. Uh, we hit enter and uh, you should see that the cached default password uh, right over here is password. So again, this may be for the IE user, which is the uh, the default user on the system, or it could be for the administrator. And regardless, we are going to save it here. So we've obtained our clear text password. There we go. And uh, yeah, we pretty much have, re have everything we, re uh, we actually need to perform lateral movement. Now, um, as I said, we are not going to be focusing on actually pivoting through a network because we're only dealing with one target. We are taking a look at how to use these credentials to authenticate legitimately to the target. So the first uh, access vector or authentication protocol that we're going to try and utilize is RDP. Well, firstly, do we have RDP enabled on the target? Well, we can actually confirm that by opening up a shell session. And uh, again, what we can do is uh, just say netstat uh, ANO and the default uh, port that uh, Windows utilizes for RDP is 3389. So let's see if it's actually listening on port 3389. We can actually see it's, uh, it is listening on port 3389. And that means that uh, RDP is enabled. However, we can also utilize a Metasploit module. I'll just put this in the background. There we are. And I will search for RDP, right? And uh, there are various RDP modules that we can utilize. Uh, there is also an RDP module that will allow you to enable it or enable RDP. However, it requires administrative privileges. In our case, we have administrative privileges. So it'll actually, um, it, it won't do anything because we already have it enabled. But if it is disabled, uh, this module will enable it. Uh, we also have a few other RDP uh, modules here, as you can see, that uh, will actually check and uh, identify where the RDP is currently running. And that's an auxiliary module. So we can say use and uh, show options. And uh, we then set the R host, which is going to be the target IP which in this case is 192.168.2.109. And uh, again, I'm just going to hit run. And uh, we will then again, we can provide the RDP client IP. Um, so again, in, in this particular case, uh, we can set it to ours. So we can say RDP, um, RDP client. Uh, let me just, uh, sorry, let me just say set, so set RDP uh, client. Um, client IP, and we'll set that to the Kali IP. So 192.168.2.21, we hit run. 
and that will again tell us whether RDP is actually enabled and you can see detected RDP on the target IP, uh, Windows version 10, etc. And uh, yeah, we can pretty much authenticate uh, with, uh, or we can actually authenticate to the target via RDP. So the RDP client that uh, I'm going to be using is going to be Remina, and I've already typed in the IP here. So Remina is an, uh, remote, a remote desktop client uh, for Kali. It should come, Kali should come prepackaged with uh, Remina. So again, just type in the target uh, IP address and the port, and uh, we hit enter. And it's going to ask us for RDP authentication credentials. So let's try and see whether the um, we can actually log in using this password to the administrator account. So I'm just going to copy that and we'll provide the password there and we'll hit OK. And let's see whether we can get access to the administrator account. It looks like we've obtained a connection. So there we are. We'll just wait for it to load up and we should be able to see the graphical user interface. Um, another user is signed in. Uh, if you continue, the other user will be disconnected. Uh, no, we don't want to do that. Uh, primarily because uh, the current user that is logged on is um, the, the current user that's logged on is the IE user. Uh, but we can actually do it. And let's see, uh, we might lose our, um, uh, we might actually lose our interpreter session. But uh, again, let's just try and see whether that works. Uh, administrator like so and we'll paste that in there you can also provide the domain information here we're going to hit okay and uh, let's just authenticate i'm going to say yes and uh, we're just going to wait for that to actually switch over so you can see uh, please wait for uh, ms edge win 10 uh, i user to i can't see the entire screen here uh, we can also toggle full screen here so i'm just going to toggle out of this and we can also modify various aspects uh, of the RDP session. So again, uh, if let me just open up the uh, menu or the configuration uh, page here, just uh, give that a second. Um, hopefully, uh, we're able to get the session on the target system here. Um, I'm just going to open that up. So I'm just going to wait for this to actually connect. And uh, we can see that we have access here. So it's just going to take a few seconds to start up. And uh, looks like the start menu is opening up there. And uh, yeah, the connection might be a bit slow, but that's primarily an issue with my internet connection. And we have access to the administrator account, as you can see here. I'll click on that there. And uh, we should have access to the admin account. So uh, yeah, we pretty much have been able to authenticate to the client via, uh, via RDP. And as you can see, we don't require any Metasploit modules. We're not exploiting anything. We just have access through legitimate credentials, right? that we were able to get. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to uh, terminate the RDP session here. And uh, we can now take a look at how to utilize PSXEC uh, with this particular password. Uh, and I'll, I'll actually have to switch over to my Windows client and show you how that works, right? So uh, just uh, give me a few seconds to switch over to my Windows client. All right, so I'm back on my Windows client and I'm currently on the Sys internals page and you can see the PSXEC tool. So this is a legitimate Windows utility uh, and I'll just give you a basic introduction as to what it is used for, right? So it says utilities like Telnet and remote control programs like Symantec's PC Anywhere let you execute programs on remote systems, but they can be a pain to set up and require that you install client software on the remote systems that you wish to access. PSXEC is a lightweight telnet replacement that lets you execute processes on other systems complete with full interactivity for console applications without having to manually install client software. PSXX's most powerful use, uh, users include launching interactive command prompts on remote systems and remote enabling tools like IP config that otherwise do not have the ability to show information about remote systems. So again, uh, what we need to do is just download it. I already have it downloaded and I'm just going to switch over to my downloads directory uh, with my command prompt. So I'm just going to open up my command prompt and I'll head over into downloads. Um, sorry, let's just switch over to downloads. There we go. And I'm just going to enlarge this uh, so that you can actually see what's going on. So I'll increase the font size here and I'll just um, maximize that and uh, we can actually uh, get started with the process here. So um, I'll just navigate into the PS tools directory. And again, you need to uh, unzip the archive once you've downloaded it. And within this particular um, 
folder you're going to have the psxec executable and psxec 64 bit so again based on your target architecture you can use either one of them in our case our target system is running a 64-bit version of windows so we can utilize psxec64.exe all right so uh, again we already have legitimate credentials and we can utilize psxec for lateral movement by uh, spawning a, a command prompt legitimately uh, uh, by connecting to the target system with the uh, credentials that we re received and then we can utilize that shell to do anything that we might have done uh, with meterpreter or a standard command shell right um, so to do this what we want to do is uh, we can actually just say um, i'll just say psxx so i'll execute and I'll say psxec.exe, 64.exe. I now need to provide the, uh, the IP address of the target system. In this case, it's going to be 192.168.2.109. I then provide the username, which is going to be administrator, and then the password, which in this case was password uh, with a zero and an exclamation mark. And then you specify the command that you want to execute on the target system. So, for example, I can say IP config. I'm going to hit enter. And uh, for some reason, it's giving us an error here. Uh, let's see where we're getting the error. Um, so it's going to say that the uh, right. So I'm just going to um, just go back over here. And uh, we're just going to get rid of that. Uh, so psxx64.exe and we'll just launch uh, the, we'll just repeat the commands here. Alternatively, you can also utilize it with PowerShell. It makes it much uh, easier. So we'll say user is administrator and the password is going to be password. And we then say IP config, hit enter. And it's going to say starting PS uh, exe SVC on the target. So you want to give that a few seconds and uh, it should actually uh, provide the output of the IP config command. All right, so as you can see here, it actually connected successfully and it provided the output of the command that we set up. And we can confirm that this is the target because the IPv4 address displayed from the IP config command tells us that uh, the IP of, of, of that target is 192.168.2.109. So if we want to spawn a, a shell, uh, we can essentially just say instead of ipconfig, we want to run cmd.exe. And again, it's going to give us access to the administrator account via a command prompt. So I'm going to hit enter. It's going to say starting the psexe svc service on, on the target IP. So again, give that a few seconds. And uh, I'm just going to wait for that to actually start up. All right, there we go. We actually got a command prompt uh, session on the, uh, spawned on the, on the target. And uh, you can see it's uh, currently within the uh, Windows System 32 directory. So if I say, who am I? You can see MS Edge Win 10 administrator. And now I pretty much have access to the target system via legitimate command prompt. And I authenticated with legitimate credentials. So now if I was in an active directory environment or I had other PCs connected to the network, I could again start pinging the entire network subnet to discover uh, systems on the network and then pivot to those systems, so on and so forth. Um, so I can pretty much do anything now. So for example, net user, I can add other user accounts, I can delete them, I can make uh, changes to the system, I pretty much have total control over the system. And as I said, you can then utilize this command prompt uh, to actually again start uh, finding other systems on the network and then pivot onto those systems and make your way uh, to the target system that you actually wanted to compromise. Uh, that being said, that's pretty much how to utilize the psxec uh, command or the utility uh, for legitimate authentication or rather for lateral movement, if you will. Uh, now that we have, uh, we have actually taken a look at the various methods that we can actually utilize for legitimate authentication with our clear text credentials, let's take a look at another scenario where you don't have access to any clear text passwords, but you have the password hashes. Right, so how do we use the password hashes uh, for authentication? So I'm going to switch back over to my Windows, or sorry, to my Kali VM. All right, so I'm back on my Kali VM. And uh, again, we're going to use the scenario where I only have the password hashes. So how would we go about utilizing uh, these hashes for legitimate authentication to either spawn a shell uh, or to uh, in some way authenticate 
with the target well the way we can actually facilitate that is through the pass the hash technique right so the pass the hash technique is fairly simple to understand all it uh, involves is essentially authenticating with the target using a hash and you might be asking yourself well can we actually do that well we can actually do that using smb right or through the smb protocol so metasploit actually has a very helpful module that allows us to do this and it actually will provide us with a meterpreter session and uh, again i'll actually show this to you so i'm just going to put this in the background um so put this in the background here and if i list out my sessions uh, you can see that uh, we have the uh, the two sessions here and one of them is privileged uh, and what we can do is just search for uh, psxec right and uh, again just bear with me and i'll show you what i'm talking about so there we are you can see exploit windows smb psxec that is the module we want to use and it actually utilizes psxec but in this case we're utilizing a hash so you can see the description is fairly uh, indic uh, it actually tells you about what what's happening here so microsoft windows authentication uh, user utility right or user code execution in this case so uh, what we can do is just say use paste in the module name uh, we can set our payload our target is a 64-bit system so windows x64 meterpreter uh, meterpreter reverse tcp uh, we then say show options here and we want to set the l port because we already have that one running so we'll set it to 4443 and now for the options you can see we need to set the target ip here uh, the port is already configured correctly that's smb smb is always active on windows unless explicitly disabled we then need to set the smb domain if there is one in our case we don't have a domain uh, we can then set the smb password and the smb user right now in terms of the password we can provide the password the clear text password or the password hash and i'll actually show this to you so i'll set the smb user first so i'll say smb user and uh, we will set it to administrator right we hit enter and then we copy the password hash now in terms of the password hash we only want to copy these two pieces of uh, or, or these two strings rather which make up the ntlm hash and we want to exclude all the rest of the content uh, and then we want to say set smb uh, pass right and then we paste in the hash there and then we set the target IP, which is our hosts 192.168.2.109. We hit run and uh, give that a few seconds. There we are authenticating, selecting the PowerShell target, executing the payload. And voila, we get a meterpreter session. And in this case, if we type in get UID, entity authority system, so a fully privileged um, meterpreter session. And again, that is how to authenticate legitimately using a password hash. So regardless of what uh, of what credentials you've been able to, to gather, uh, they could be clear text, they could be password hashes. You can utilize all of these credentials for lateral movement. And as I said, uh, again, we have a legitimate session on the target and we've taken a look at how to authenticate with RDP and also how to authenticate with PSXEC uh, or the PSXEC utility, which is very, very helpful as you've just seen. Uh, and also how to utilize uh, password hashes here with the uh, Windows SMB PSXEC module on Metasploit. Uh, that is pretty much all that I wanted to cover in this video. As I said, this was an introductory course to Red Team operations, primarily on Windows systems. We also took a look at, uh, you know, various evasion techniques on Linux because that is quite important. I will be making more series or more Red Team series that will be focused on advanced Windows environments uh, like Active Directory so that we can take a look at how to utilize other tools and techniques to make our way through the system. And then, of course, I will also be covering the other tactics that I haven't covered in this series, um, like exfiltration, so on and so forth. Uh, thank you very much for watching this series. I would love to hear your feedback. You can contact me on Twitter. Uh, my username is Hackersploit. I would also like to say, or uh, I would like to, uh, you know, provide or, you know, give a huge shout out and thank you to Linode for making this series possible. They're really doing a lot in the cybersecurity industry and providing users like yourself with free training, uh, again, so that you can uh, improve your skill sets and uh, helping uh, make the, uh, the digital IT industry more cybersecurity aware. So I just wanted to say thank you very much to Linode and uh, thank you very much for going through this series if you've made it this far. 
Uh, thank you. And uh, I will be seeing you in the next series. Bye.